Hey everyone, let's take a look at the new animation utilities added in version 1.6 of Tailwind CSS. Out of the box, Tailwind comes with a series of suggested animations you can apply on any element in your markup. The first one we'll look at is the bounce animation. Let's take this static square and we'll simply add an animate bounce class on this div here. Now our square is happily bouncing up and down and having a good time. If we look at Tailwind's default config file in the node modules folder here, and we go to the animation key, the bounce animation is using the bounce keyframes and looping over these every one second infinitely. In my Tailwind config file, I'll extend the animation key here and we'll override the bounce animation and make it faster. Bounce 0.3 seconds infinite. Our square is now bouncing much faster. It's still using the bounce keyframes defined in the default config, moving up and down by 25% with a fine-grained cubic Bezier animation timing function. So, we overrode the animation property, but we still use the original keyframes. We'll look at customizing keyframes in a minute. Let's look at another out-of-the-box animation utility, Animate Spin. We have our globe emoji here, and this time we'll apply the Animate Spin class, which will make the globe spin on itself every second. As always, these utilities support responsive variants, so I can prefix my class with MD here, and the globe will stop spinning and only spin when we reach the MD breakpoint. If you need to stop an animation at a higher breakpoint, you can use the animate-none utility. We'll apply it here for the LG breakpoint, and now our globe only spins between the MD and LG breakpoints. Next up, the animate ping utility. We'll start with this square that kind of looks like an app icon with a notification badge on top. Let's add a nice pinging effect to our notification. For that, I'll duplicate this div here and add the animate ping utility on the first one. Our notification now definitely feels live and worthy of some attention. One more animation out of the box to look at. Here's a placeholder skeleton card that you typically see in apps while the content is loading. We can reinforce that feeling of loading content by adding a pulsing effect to these elements. I'll add an animate pulse class to this wrapper. And now we have a nice throbbing pulsing effect indicating that the content of this card is about to change. That's a roundup of the built-in animations. Chances are you'll want to customize them or add new ones, so let's build a quick one together. Once again, we'll take a plain little white square as our starting point. I want to create a wiggle animation, so I will add an animate wiggle class here. For now, it does nothing, obviously, because it doesn't exist. Let's head over to the config file and let's add an animation property called wiggle. We'll make it apply a wiggle keyframe animation, which we'll need to define, and loop over it infinitely every one second. We'll now extend the keyframes property from our default config and add a wiggle property where we'll define our keyframes for our custom animation. Side note, the keyframes name does not need to match the animation name. You can call the keyframes anything you'd like, but make sure that name is matching what you reference in the animation declaration. I'll set it back to wiggle as I like the convention of matching the names and you can see it was the case for the default bounce animation as well. So, let's define the 0% and 100% keyframes, or the very first and last frames in the animation. For these, we'll apply some transforms. We'll scale the element up by 20% with scale 1.2 and rotate it by 7 degrees. At the 50% keyframe, or midway through the animation, we'll want the same transforms, but set to scale down by 20%, and rotate by minus seven degrees. So our square should start and end zoomed up and slightly tilted clockwise, and from there scale down and tilt to the other side. Let's check it out, and sure enough, here it is, wiggling for attention.